everybody, welcome back again to Build Tune Race. We're working on the Camaro again, and today I have a whole bunch of little things I want to try to get accomplished on the build. But one of the main things I've been working on is this mess of an area after cutting out the big inner structure. You can kind of see where it used to be because this is where the two front end would line up. This area is kind of a mess as far as trying to finish it off. This is a big structure here, but I cut it to save weight. And then I looked in there and I was like, that's a big mess. And if we're gonna paint this and try to make it nice, I need to at least cap it. So this morning I came in here and started working on a little piece of material that would be something about like so, that will sit in there and kind of tuck up like that and then be welded all the way around, smoothed in and then painted. So using cardboard for some of this stuff I've seen people do works really, really well. Transfer that to some metal, which I've already done. I ended up picking up some 16 gauge metal last night. It's a little bit thicker than the other metal I've been using it in the car, but I already laid it out on here. So I just need to get it cut out and then hopefully tack it in here and weld it up. Another thing that I did last night is I cut, I knocked the little plug out of there where it was riveted in and that's gone now. And then today I'm gonna weld up a couple more little holes where I had self tappers try to grind all that and really try to get all the metal work more or less completed on this thing so then we can start using just a little bit of like the body filler icing stuff to uh, smooth out all of this and then end up painting the interior of the car. I think I'm actually gonna do that as well around all the welds there and seal it back in. I'm gonna use the Tiger Bond from the bottom side to seal in all that metal as well to make sure that we don't get water that comes up in it and starts rusting and all that type of stuff. So let's get into at least fixing this for now and then we'll move on to some more stuff. Went ahead and welded in my little piece there. Still need some more grinding, but you guys can kind of see the weld and then where the piece is at. Now it's all filled up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this a little bit more. There's just a little bit more there and once this is in, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get to it. So do a little bit of massage in there. Then I'll take my last little mount. This is for the EGTs. Weld it in at the same angle. Probably give myself as much room as possible between here and here, and then here in the bar. Luckily this weld is not too hard to hit. That one won't be the funnest. Those ones are fully welded. I, uh, for, this one is not for a race pack. It's actually the race pack smart wire, which if you guys saw where I unboxed all the parts for this thing or some of them, that I bought that for the car. That'll be for all the wiring in the body, headlights, tail lights, fans, all that type of stuff. The last one is all tacked in there, looking pretty good. It's not gonna be the most fun to weld, but I should be able to get, I already got that one tacked way up in there. This one I'll have to reach up and try to get as much as I can from this side. I might have to try to sneak down into this little hole and weld it from there as well if I have to. But otherwise, these freaking mounts are sick. In the last video I mentioned these are gonna be for sale. Check out the link in the description so you guys can grab these as well. From LJB Motorsports, Lil Joey, he, uh, he's doing some awesome things and creating some really cool parts. And I'm super excited to help him bring them to market to, for you guys, because I mean, this made my build so much easier and so much nicer than having to try to make each one of these mounts and they go right in, they fit the bar that I need it to fit, weld it right in and mount it right up. On these builds, it always seems like I'm trying to add new equipment and tools and all that stuff to help me with work on everything else. I've been buying a bunch of these DeWalt tools. I actually got a jigsaw with some Milwaukee blades and that's what I'm gonna use to kind of cut this out in a rough shape. I was gonna use my four inch cutoff wheel but then you end up over cutting and it's always a pain. So this should be actually the better tool for the job and then it should hopefully fit in there better once I'm done without having to grind it and do a bunch of more, a bunch more work to the piece. It was a little rough to begin with, but we're making some progress now. Here's a look at the rough piece. Everything looks pretty good there. Definitely have some extra material down there. And I think that's all gonna line up pretty decent. So just a little bit more grinding, massaging, and cleaning up. And I just needed to kind of line up with that there. So I just have some extra material down here in this area. And I need to go ahead and shape. Kind of got the piece fitted in here. I was gonna go to the outside, and I think I'm gonna go to the inside and just kind of weld up where this little notch is at right here. But otherwise, it kind of comes up along there 
push in, ties in nice there. Gonna weld down along there. So then I think it just adds some structure there and also I think that looks way better capped in than having kind of that open area. So then when we go to paint it, that'll smooth in as well, real nice. That kind of gives a good ending right here. I'll just grind some of this back and weld it to flush in what I can in that area because this is kind of the inner structure that I'm trying to now make the outer structure. I ended up tacking it with TIG so I could kind of control everything, but even that, just that little tack on TIG, it starts to open up. If you've ever welded on factory cars, like the steel is junk, it's so gross that it just like opens up all this frosting and all this crap. So even down through here, there's one or two little spots and it just like keeps like kind of blowing this material away. So it's pretty gross. I try to grind and clean up some of it, get to raw metal, but it still just welds like crap. So uh, I went ahead and grabbed the MIG. It helps kind of cover that up, but it still isn't ideal. You just kind of weld your best and grind the rest. Morning, everybody. Actually back over here again. We got April's Jag out of here. We put all our big mess of all the parts and pieces. The engine showed up and you guys probably seen that already in another video. It's not the last video where I was putting these plates in the car and uh, I've been working on them slowly. Just finished welding, grinding, weld, grind, weld, grind, all the way around, kind of smoothing it in. So that's pretty much ready for a little bit of body icing. And then I also did this side here. We got dust all over the shop, so it's a big old mess. From uh, Alex spent a bunch of time wire wheeling and grinding the inner wheel well to get rid of like all of the protectant where uh, like rock chips and all that stuff. So I also welded, went ahead and welded in this piece over here, smoothed it in for the most part, got it pretty good and it's ready for some icing. One of the other nights Alex came over and helped me remove the seatbelt mounts from both sides of the car over here. Got all of this stuff welded in too. So that only needs to be ground. So today, and maybe some tomorrow is a bunch of working on this thing trying to get all the welding and grinding done while we were working on cutting out the seat belt mounts and all that stuff we got we actually pulled through the body in a couple little spots as you can see probably right there so we just got to weld those up kind of smooth it back in with the hammer smooth it back with the grinder and uh grind weld grind weld some more we got the spots mostly welded up and ground still just got a little bit more work to do but otherwise that side's done as well. Welded up some more spots on the inside. Ground our filler panels for there and there where the e-brake were at. And just kind of roughing everything in. And then we'll grab some icing. Alex is actually working on trying to get this wrap off of the hood a piece at a time. Pretty much. It's not too bad though, huh? No, it's not too, too bad. It's just this. And it's, it's like old three pieces it's cracked. Yeah, there's like cracks through here, and then this is separate from this piece. Just separate from this and that and that and that. But anywhere he's running into some problems is where it's got cracks in it and stuff like that. But otherwise, at least it's not just completely falling apart. This thing is an absolute mess now from grinding all of the like body siller and all that crap. I actually missed a little bit I still need to get. But otherwise, Everything is pretty much sanded with 80 grit or wire wheel to get rid of all that extra crap. And holes are filled and sanded and everything else. So this long drawn out process of trying to prep this thing to paint the inside with some ceramic lizard skin is what I'm going to paint it with. I'm working on doing some body filler or icing as you might call it throughout the areas that I had to do metal work inside the car. Trying to blend everything in. I'll end up doing the tunnel there and that spot back there. I am not a major body guy. I have maybe painted one car in my life, maybe two, like working on them and stuff like that. Um, but I talked to some friends like Trevor from Motion Auto TV and he, I said, hey, I saw that people use icing for like trying to blend some of the little sheet melt stuff in. What do you think? He said, yeah, it should work great. So uh, I went ahead and picked up this like fantastic glaze, or I guess icing glaze is what they call it. 2% uh, hardener in it, mix it up on my little tray. And that is what I've been doing. So it's not perfect, but I really only need to hit just like where the welds were at up around here. So I'll probably hand shape a little bit of that. Uh, this spot right here was pretty rough. You guys can see that's already starting to flatten in pretty well. Some little spots where I had to cut out all the mounts and all that stuff. I'm a little thick right there. So I should probably blend that a little bit and then I'm starting to run out there. I wanted to uh, start and see if I even kind of was working. It seems to be working before I started making a video. I am not a body guy, like I said. And if you're looking for body tips, you might want to find it on another channel. But uh, I'm going to run through the process, get everything coated. We'll sand, we'll coat, we'll sand, we'll coat. 
And then once it's done, we'll check out and see what it looks like. But I figured I'd at least show you guys kind of what I'm working on. So we're trying to only do this one handed so I don't. So try to do this one handed without touching my camera with the gloves. You more or less put some of that on there. I'm going to put more once I got two hands. And then you take 2% of the hardener, put a little drop in there, and then we'll mix it up. That may or may not be 2%, you tell me. Then trying to not make a big old mess out of this. I end up taking this and you end up stirring it in. And uh, I need two hands for this and I don't want to get my camera all a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that more or less. You just mix that up and then you start applying it. So all the initial filler I think is good for the most part. I think spots like that and that'll probably only need one coat through there and up there. Might need a little extra just to blend it out real good. I'm not super excited about sanding in, the, in that corner to blend in the weld. But what'll be nice is with the ceramic coating, that lizard skin is actually kind of like a bed liner. So then it actually has that, you know, textured feel. So when you get in the car, it's not slippery and all that stuff. But something I didn't know is that why you wouldn't want to put bed liner inside the cars because those will actually put off VOCs when they get hot. And uh, this lizard skin is actually water-based. So then therefore it doesn't uh, put off harmful chemicals and all that stuff if it were to get hot which race cars things get hot so you don't want those like fumes coming in the cab and like driving along why do i always get a headache when i drive this dang thing and all that type of stuff so uh we'll let some of this set up and then we'll probably start sanding up here where i started and work our way through and then put a second coat if needed so i'm making some progress got that sanded that some of that over there a bunch of that up there it's coming along pretty decent not perfect but even like this even has like a wave in it there's a wave over there so even the stock floor pan on this is not great so just trying to you know blend it plus obviously with the lizard skin being a textured surface it should help hide a bunch of little imperfections anyway so i don't think i gotta go too too crazy it's not like i'm trying to paint it paint it so uh even if we were i mean it's not terrible but it definitely isn't great but kind of got to decide where to call it i mean this thing's a race car and i'd rather be racing it than doing body work for the next three years so end of the day, I'm probably about a good 10 or 11 hours into today. And uh, we did quite a freaking bit. I mean, that's a lot of tedious work and we're getting really, really close. Just smoothing in that spot a little bit more. Up there's looking pretty good. I've got like two coats there, three coats on where it bridges. Over there, I'm on like second coat. Over here is looking pretty good as well. Uh, again, not trying to make it perfect, but trying to make it good enough to spray that ceramic coating in here. So plan is hopefully to shoot that tomorrow finish this up first thing and then uh shoot it so we'll see how the day goes obviously if it's ready it's ready and if it's not it's not but tomorrow is a warm day the last warm day for about a week so to spray it with it being nice and warm it would be great to nice and warm for colorado too that's like uh, you know 50s so in the shop with the heater i can get it about 65 70 maybe in, in the middle of the day so that'd be great let everything cure but either way so otherwise that'll be it for this video if you guys want to see me finish this thing up and spray the ceramic coating on the floor make sure you hit that subscribe button and come back for the next video we'll see you guys later